Hey everybody, Erin here. I wanted to pop in and talk to you a little bit today about creating balance on your way to becoming a CPA. Now, a lot of people come to me for support on their CPA exam journey. And one of the things that I think is common or most common with those individuals is that in their first attempt, when they were out there attempting the exams on their own, they did not have this level of balance. They felt like they were having to make major sacrifices in their life in order to have time to study and move forward in the exam. They experienced burnout in that process or had what they call life situations that happened. Life happened and it threw them off or took them away from their studying for whatever reason, thinking, oh, I'll get back to it again soon. And then before you know it, it's been several years. So this happens a lot. And one of the things that I always say to people is you can go through this journey and you can work hard and you can suffer and you can strive and persevere and really you know, do the hard work, just sort of grind it out. And at the end, if you're able to sustain that and you're able to really have the fortitude to withstand that type of pressure, for long enough, you'll become a CPA, you will. You will eventually pass all of those tests. Now for some people that takes a year or two, for some people that takes 10 years, but you'll get there eventually if you stick with it. Now the other approach is that you can go through this process open, curious, you can have balance, you can learn about yourself, learn about how you learn, and you can develop skills, and tools that are going to be helpful for you as an individual and as a professional for years to come. And at the end of that, you also become a CPA. You pass the exam in either scenario. Now you get to choose. Do you want to go through this and just sort of suffer through, do it the way you've always done it, make those sacrifices, really, gosh, just experience that pain. Maybe there's something in it for you to be able to share those war stories years and years from now with uh, brand new staff coming into your organization. But if not, if you would actually be open to a different experience, that is possible for you too. So I wanna share with you a couple of the ways that we can change your experience and help you to create balance in this process, which will in itself eliminate that suffering, eliminate the pressure and the stress, or at least minimize that um, to a great extent and help you to have a better experience along the way. So one of the core pieces of that is taking care of your well-being. When we don't do that, you become much more susceptible to burnout, much more susceptible to um, fatigue, frustration, resentment on the exam, and all sorts of other negative experiences that can come along this process. So I like to think about self-care like the roots of a tree. If you think about a big tree, um, like I, well, I'm in California. So you think about those giant redwood trees that have been there for hundreds of years. They have roots that are deep and strong and wide and just expansive. And no matter what kind of weather comes through, those trees aren't going anywhere. It would take an awful lot to get to move that tree or to rip it out of the ground, right? So that's the equivalent of having a really strong foundation to your well being and your self care. It's going to take a lot to move you. It's going to take a lot to throw you off course because you're so well taken care of. You're so well charged up. You've got those deep roots that are holding you steadfast in your process. The opposite of that, when we don't prioritize self-care and have that foundation, it's like a little baby tree that you might see in the yard that's freshly planted. Might even need wooden posts or metal posts to help it stand up straight. It's that little. Those roots aren't as established. They're there, but they aren't as deep. They aren't as wide. They aren't as strong yet. And so if a big storm came through or even a, a strong person, you could easily move that tree. You could easily knock it over or you know, pull it out of the ground much more easily than you could one of those giant redwood trees. And so if you're going into this exam process without that foundational self-care, 
it's going to be a lot easier for you or a lot easier for outside circumstances, I should say, to throw you off track. When life happens, you're going to be very susceptible to falling off of your study plan or not being able to handle the complexity of juggling those multiple responsibilities. It will all feel too much. That self-care is the thing that will help you to weather that storm, quite literally, right? Anything that is thrown at you, you'll be okay. You'll be able to bounce back from those challenges. You'll be able to get back on track or stay on track even when unexpected things pop up. So I have a client right now who, uh, in an effort to squeeze out a few more hours of the day and get a few extra study hours in, eliminated a lot of self-care activities that were previously in place. And within a week or two, they were completely off track with their study schedule. All sorts of circumstances had bubbled up. And really, they were making a solid case for, I cannot continue in this process. There's just no way. I'm exhausted. I'm burned out. I can't do it. Everybody needs these things from me. This was a terrible time to choose to do this. When just weeks before, they were completely, like, how do I describe it? Completely engaged in the process, absorbing and learning information, excited about it eager to move forward, and in fact, moving forward at a great pace. So what changed? We eliminated those self-care activities. And just like clockwork, life found a way to creep in. It's like leaving your door open. Life crept in and created all sorts of circumstances that were not conducive to a good study experience. So when I talk about self-care, these things don't have to take a lot of time or cost a lot of money. Talking about getting good sleep, eating healthy, drinking enough water throughout the day, um, having a connection, maybe a spiritual connection or a religious connection, something, you know, a higher power there that guides you. That could even be like personal affirmations or meditation or yoga, having time with your friends and family, exercising, any of those things that fuel you up and recharge your batteries. They're often one of the first things to be eliminated out of the schedule when we want to find more time to study and to dedicate to this process, but I implore you to not do that or to find a way to incorporate as many of those activities, even if they are shortened, that you can on a daily basis or a weekly basis. But definitely you want to be doing some self-care activities every single day. So Carving out that time and prioritizing those activities are going to have you show up to your study sessions happier and healthier. I think of it like if we're, I'm taking a team to a Super Bowl, I want those players to be in the best condition they possibly can be. I don't want them to be bruised and broken and fatigued and injured and all of those things. I don't want to bring my C team. I want to bring my A team to that game. And similarly, you want to bring your best version of yourself to each study session and, of course, to the test day. So that's where these self-care practices are going to come in. So make sure to prioritize that. If there's other things that are important to you, like getting to your niece or nephew's soccer game or attending a family birthday party or being in connection with your friends, hiking on the weekends, all of those activities are fair game. All you have to do is plan around it. So if you like to hike with your friends and go to brunch on Sundays, either plan to have Sundays as your day off, your one day off of the week, or plan accordingly to do your studying before you go hiking, then go and enjoy the rest of your day. That's what balance looks like. Now, if you're trying to do balance in a way that you're noticing doesn't work for you, so here's an example. I like to hike and go to brunch with my friends on Sunday, but I also know that I'm likely to get peer pressured into three or four mimosas at that brunch. And then I'm not gonna probably be in my best state to study afterwards. But yet every week I say, you know what? I'll do that Sunday afternoon. You may notice that there are some times when balance you know, in that situation doesn't really work. It's not conducive. We're not having a win-win where your studying gets prioritized and your fun gets prioritized. Only the fun and then the study loses out. That's where you need to get a little bit creative and figure out where can I truly prioritize this time? Where do I fit it in? It's gonna to have to be before 
or I'm going to have to be a little bit more strict with myself about not having four mimosas, maybe one, right? And a little nap and then time for studying afterwards. So get creative, be unreasonable with yourself about how balanced you can make this process. Notice if there's any judgment about this should be hard, this should be painful, forget all that. You can have this process be enjoyable, be something where you can minimize the amount of sacrifice you have to make and where you can still get excellent results. I would bet that if you had more balance in your life, but still prioritized studying, you would get better results than when you're doing it from a depleted place where you don't have that strong foundation. Try it out, pick a few activities that you can do to take great care of yourself and start to craft a balanced approach for you and, and the CPA exam journey. I really wanna hear about it. Make sure you click below, you can schedule a call with me um, to create a more balanced schedule, just to tell me how it's going. You can also respond to this message. I'd love to um, hear what's working and some of the challenges you're experiencing so that I can address that in a future video. Have a great rest of your day. I look forward to talking to you soon.